Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you as humble as we know how on today, Lord. Lord, we just thank you right now, Lord God, for allowing us to be amongst the land of the living on this morning. Lord, we thank you for keeping us while we were sleeping, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for good sleep, sound sleep, Lord. Thank you for the rest, Lord. Today, Lord God, we reverence you, Father. And we say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you, and the blood of Jesus is against you. Lord, I thank you for going before my sisters and my brothers, Christ. I pray, Lord God, that you would strengthen them where, where they're weak and build them up where they are torn down. Thank you, Lord, for being the God of love, understanding, knowledge, revelation, war. Lord, I pray on today, Lord God, that you would go before this podcast, Lord. that you would not let me speak anything that is of me, Father. But that you would show up, show out, do what it is you feel to do, Lord. I bow before you, Lord, my God. Lord, I thank you today for sparing your people, Lord. Lord, thank you for not giving your heritage to reproach. That the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Thank you for doing this thing, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the bread of life you've given us on today, Lord. The river of living water. That it may replenish us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Saints, we're going to walk on water. Amen. I want to say that I love you so much. Amen. And there's just nothing you can do about it. Amen. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. God is great and greatly to be praised, amen, greatly to be praised. We're going to read from the book of Psalms, chapter 23. Psalms chapter 23. It's going to read like this. The Lord is my shepherd. I 
I shall not want. Just those few words alone could stop and make you think. Do I really believe that the Lord is my shepherd? Do I really believe that? Does this just sound good? It's like a a song. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. Right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It sounds good. But do we believe that for real? Like, do we really believe that the Lord of hosts is your shepherd? (laughs) this is where I get in trouble saints because there are many still looking at the word through a glass darkly the bible says now face to face now abiding face to face now seeing the word at face value, do we really believe that the Lord is our shepherd? If the Lord told us to do something that nobody else in this world has ever told us to do concerning this word, would we do it? Is he really our shepherd today? Or do we just like to say it? The Lord is my shepherd. Is he? Is he? (laughs) you know you ever had a um, a sore spot on your foot on your toe because of a piece of skin you know those um, the hang nails I guess they call them a hang nail where you ever got one of those little one of those things like on the end of your of the toenail of your foot and you try to go without cutting it off or have you get, ever had one on your finger on your fingernail beside it you know the little hangnail or whatever and it's one of those kind that get red if you don't cut it and even if you cut it it hurt if you don't cut it it hurt but if you go in and cut it, it'll hurt and be sore for maybe a couple of, maybe a day or so. But then that pain goes away and your nail is back, is back to normal. But if you don't cut it, it's just a persisting pain, you know. Or if you've had one on your toenail, one of your toenails, probably the pinky toe. It's a persisting pain, especially when you try to ignore it, you know. And you put your shoes on. You're ready to go for the day. And all through the day, that pain right there is just nagging. You know? It's not like you've lost a toe or a finger. But it's like it's just nagging. It's a nagging thing. Especially if it bump up against your your um, shoe. And it's going to do that if you don't cut it off. Right? Well, that feeling there is kind of like this verse 1 here. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And it's like a hangnail because how can I go through the rest of this chapter If I have not even become one with verse one. How can I take part? How can I get the benefit of the rest 
of Psalms 23. We need it. But how can we get the benefit of it if we don't come into agreement and into alignment with verse 1? The Lord is my shepherd. Because these first few words here from my brother David, five words. These five words is going to be a compound to I shall not want. Because if we have the Lord, we have everything. It doesn't matter. (laughs) It doesn't matter what go, who go, don't matter. As long as I got the Lord as my shepherd, I don't want for nothing. (laughs) The Lord is my shepherd. We talked about the pruning of the Lord. We've talked about entering into the mind of Christ, which is going to cost the pruning, right? Which is going to cost obedience. Which is going to cost the Lord to then pity his people, to be jealous, and to do something about this thing. Now the Lord is telling us that you have to allow me to be your shepherd in the pits of your heart in the depths of your mind in the deepest parts of your soul you have To reverence me as your shepherd. Because Satan is coming. And he finds nothing in me. The Lord is my shepherd. Because you and I have made the conscious decision to allow the Lord to be who, whom he desires to be. We look around and realize we want for nothing. Everything that we desire is in the Savior. Now that we have established that we will allow the Lord like David to be my shepherd now I want for nothing then we can move on to the benefits of verse 2 the Bible says He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth.
with me beside the still waters. What is the benefit of having still waters? The article says being in or near still waters can provide benefits for mental well-being in different ways. It can provide benefits for a mental. How many of us need a mental well-being? So, to have made the decision to allow the Lord to be my shepherd, now He tells me when it's time for a mental clarity. He tells me when it's time to undergo mental well-being why because the fight is great why because we fight on a daily the good fight of faith and in doing this the Lord knows when enough is enough there are seasons and times when the Lord becomes our true shepherd. So he makes us why? Because we are born with a fight in us. So the Lord, the shepherd, has to make us lay down. Not just anywhere, but I want you to lie down in green pastures. I want you to lie down in green pastures. The color green embodies harmony. How many of us need uh, spiritual harmony? The color green embodies tranquility. The color green embodies peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. The Lord, our shepherd, makes us to lie down in harmony, tranquility, and peace. 
enhancing stability and endurance. How many of us, because we know more than God, how many of us have neglected these green pastures? How many of us have said we can afford the green pastures right now? We'll do it later. And in saying such, we fail to realize that our mental stability is off. And an unjust balance is and shall be always an abomination unto the Lord. He says, because I am your shepherd, I shall lead you into the green pastures and make you lay down. Green is commonly associated with growth, renewal, promoting optimism, hopefulness, and balance. Now, abiding faith, hope, Charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Never did the Lord speak that you and I did not need hope. Never did the Lord say that you and I did not need faith. But what he did say was that between faith, hope, and charity, among these three, I'm going to tell you which one is the greatest. If you look at your foot and you have five toes, you realize that the big toe is probably going to be classified as the greatest. But if you've ever had to go with a wounded pinky toe, you'll realize that you need that pinky toe just as much as you need the big one. Because every last one of them equal out to balance. So he says strategically, because you have made me your shepherd, this is what I'm going to do. Number one, you're not going to want for anything because everything you want is in me. And I am going to make sure that you have it. Number two, I am going to lead you, okay, beside the still waters. In green pastures, significant for harmony, tranquility, and peace. Enhancing stability and something that you have to have in this race. I'm giving you endurance. Ministering angels come and minister to my son. Minister to my daughter. Give him endurance. Because I'm looking now. The harmony seems like it's 
about to run out, fulfill them with more harmony. While you're at it, tranquility, because I am ordering your steps. Why? Because it's for my sake. It's for righteousness sake that I order these things for you, son. That I order these things for you, my daughter. I'm also going to order something else called growth. Renewal. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to cause a calmness to come over you. Fertility, because you, son, you daughter, you are one of the ones that have taken me at my word. And because you have, I need you to be fertile when you leave this place because it is my desire for you to reproduce what I have given you like the grass like the leaves like the trees I want you to reproduce Verse 2 says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me. Those that are led by the Spirit of God, these here are the sons of God. So now that I've made the decision that the Lord is my shepherd, he begins to lead me beside still waters. What is the benefit of still waters, we said? Because it gives us a mental well-being. Being beside still waters creates a sense of awe. It gives us a sense of something that's greater than myself. And it expands the mind. Being beside still waters, it provides soothing sensory experiences how many of us are lacking the experience of being beside still waters the sound the smell the sight being beside still waters feeds every sense of the body even the mind. Being beside still waters, it also, it facilitates mindfulness and something that you and I need, reflection. We begin to reflect on where God has brought us we begin to receive where the Lord wants to take us. A mindful reflection beside the still waters. Lord, thank you for what you've done for me. And Lord, my soul says yes to the place that you desire for me to be. To enter in their ads, 
I receive it. He restored my soul. Now the word restore, I don't know if you know it or not, but because you and I have been living, and most of us have grown on this podcast, so because we've been living and experiencing different things that those of us that have come of age begin to experience with life mishaps and and disappointments and, and failures, bloopers, blunders, success, goals, dreams, aspirations, all of these things, we don't really understand that in going after something and going after someone and going after those or them, we don't understand that we begin to give a part of our soul away to him and we begin to give a part of our soul away to her and we begin to give a part of our soul away and before we know it we're only left with a little snippet that we can call our soul because over the years we've been issuing it out to different things to different people to different wants to different dreams the Lord says he restoreth my soul to me what does the word restore mean it means to bring back how many of you need God to bring back the entirety of your soul to you Restore means to bring back a previous right, practice, custom, or situation. Restore means to reinstate. Restore means to return. Do you know that when people pass away, sometimes those people can take a little snippet of our soul with them. Why? Because we loved them so much. And while we keep going with this thing called life, still this person has passed away. This person was great in my life. And while I know and I trust in God that he knows what's best, still there was a soul tie to this person. And now that this person is gone, now there's a part of my soul that I don't feel like I can get back. But the Lord says today, if you make the choice and the decision to make me your shepherd, I will restore your soul. I will reinstate. I will return. I will put back. I will bring back. I will reinstall, rehabilitate your soul where it belongs. I will return it to its former condition. I'm going to return it to its former place. To his former position. 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to repair it. I'm, 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 I'm going to renovate your soul to its original condition. Soul ties over here. Soul ties over there. Soul ties. No, no. If you make me your shepherd today, I'm going to call those things that be not as though they were. I'm going to call your soul back into you, whether it's got to come from the grave, whether it's got to come from a woman, whether it's got to come from a man, whether it's got to come from a leader. Well, I don't care where your soul is. I am going to restore it. Why? Because you trusted me. I will return your soul back from lay members. I'm going to return your soul back from the congregation so that they will not affect you like they did Moses who being angry he struck the rock why? because I'm tired of these bitter folks these complaining folks these folks He restoreth my soul. Again, those that are led by the Spirit of God, it is these that are the sons He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. If you look at the word restore, you'll see the word rest. Rest means to cease work or movement in order to relax. Rest. Rest means to refresh oneself. Rest means to recover strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Well, it is the Lord's joy for us to make him our shepherd. It is the Lord's joy to begin to be able to lead those that he pity his people. It is the Lord's joy and through the Lord's joy, through our obedience, this is when we can get what we call strength. So the Lord says, in this time that you're ceasing from work or movement in order to relax, in order to refresh oneself, I'm going to allow you to recover strength. As long as I tell you, I need you to stay in this specified 
position. I need you to recline. I need you to depend on me. Hang on. Trust me. Make me, remake me, remake me your foundation. Cease from engaging in strenuous or stressful activity. Just relax. I want to restore you. You don't need pills. I will give you mental clarity in this restoration process because you've been through a lot. You've been through a lot. So he restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Who gets the glory? Well, the one that I said was my shepherd. The one that I said was my shepherd gets the glory. Because he's doing all of this for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod. And thy staff, shall comfort me. The Bible says, Thy rod and thy staff comforts me. In biblical times here, we see that the rod was used to fight off wild animals. The rod was used to count the sheep. The rod was used to direct them. Because I have told you to cease from strenuous activities, I now am going to use my rod, an essential tool, made of solid wood, I'm going to fight off for you predatorial animals, wolves. And I'm going to continue to direct you.
So we don't have a reason to fear. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. When we allow the Lord to be our shepherd, we don't want for anything. He says, I am going to send you back a comforter called the Holy Ghost. And he shall dwell in you. He's a comforter. He comforts. And any time we allow the Lord to be our shepherd, and we ask the Lord, Lord, thank you for the Holy Ghost abiding within me. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost. We get this comfort right here. He says, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Because I have allowed you to be my shepherd you prepare a table preparest and continuous prepared something in the past prepare there's something going on now preparest there's something that's continuing to be done because you have made me your shepherd Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. Now that I am anointed by you, shepherd, my cup is running over. It's a continuance of running. Surely I am comforted by goodness and mercy that shall follow me because I have allowed the Lord to be my shepherd he said he'd lead me in all truth and righteousness He promises here that he'll follow me with goodness and mercy that puts us in a sandwich. Abba, Father, leading me. Goodness and mercy following me. What else is it that I could want? The Lord says, is going to follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So how does the house of the Lord look? 
the house of the Lord looks like this. Is led by none other than the shepherd. Is followed by goodness and mercy. Forever shall we dwell in the house of the Lord. Lord, I make you my shepherd on today. Thank you.